Hi, my name is Cold Beer, and let's start with Amnesia, the Dark Descent. <laughs> This is a first-person survival horror game about immersion, discovery and living through a nightmare, an experience that will chill you to the very core. You wake up without much memories and stumble through a narrow corridors as the distant cry is heard. It is getting closer, and you somehow are pretty much sure that there are no actual babies in this castle. You don't know what will you encounter here, but the fact is that the castle is huge and you are not alone. And you have no weapon, you can only hide in the darkness. Funny thing is that the darkness makes you mad. and the the light attracts nightmares. This is an absolute lose-lose situation. So in general, if you ever wanted to be an actual protagonist in any Lovecraftian story, Amnesia will do everything it can to make you actually feel the dread. It will make your palms sweaty and the hair on your back will stand up. The game endorses the Lovecraftian trope of madness as you travel deeper and deeper down the cellars and dungeons of an ancient castle. What will you find deep down below? Nothing very nice, I promise. The game is an absolute gem with overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Rise, Son of Rome Another game with a ridiculous price tag. Rise looks like God of War, Shadow of War and Assassin's Creed smashed together and that is never a bad thing. He will take on a role of a Roman soldier who joins the army to avenge the slaying of your family and then become a hero who must fight to save the Roman Empire itself. Well, we all know that the Roman Empire is no more, so spoilers, you failed, but in the end it doesn't really matter what you did or didn't. All it matters that you had fun by killing hundreds of enemies and did that in satisfying Manner. People on Steam are talking that Rise Son of Rome is really nice. The game is short, sweet and enjoyable. My time at Porsche. This is a fun and relaxing RPG, a great open world game with an incredible amount of stuff to do. It is similar to Stardew Valley, but has more depth in it, literally because it is in 3D and figuratively because it is bigger in general. And this is the best game if you just want to relax. Here you arrive in a weird post-apocalyptic new town named Porsche to inherit your father's old building workshop and spend your time restoring it to its former glory. It's definitely not a game for a serious RPG lover, but sometimes it's just good to relax, catch some LP Packers, build some experimental devices and even go to a dungeon to fight giant rats. Definitely a game for the whole family. World War II Rebuilder the year is 1945, it's the end of World War II, and you are one of the builders assigned to repair and renovate places completely destroyed during the war. You will visit monuments and famous buildings, stumble upon their history and take part in the biggest rebuilding missions, meet civilians from England, Germany and France and guide them through the process. During the journey you will collect resources and craft materials to flip houses, repair industrial buildings, roads and squares, pick up a hammer, drive a bulldozer a mechanic and operator of various machines, drive cars and bicycles. Also clean up the area, defuse and get rid of the bombs and design the new look of the place by decorating. Game has quite nice visuals and the atmosphere is great as well. World War II Rebuilder is an owner of very positive reviews and people on Steam are saying that if you liked other sim games, especially the house flipper, this one is very similar just with a cool twist on the setting. 8-Bit Armies if Command & Conquer spent the night with Minecraft, nine months later 8-bit armies would be born. This is a fast-paced RTS, a very colorful strategy arcade game that is easy to learn for players of all skill levels. Collect resources, build up and defend your base, amass your army of tanks and planes and ultimately crush your opponents. You'll find 25 offline campaign missions, 12 co-op missions to play with your mother-in-law and 10 multiplayer maps that support up to 8 players online. The game also has pretty good AI you can play with or fight against. Game is it's easy to understand and is really user-friendly. Tales of Neon Sea this is a retro-style pixel art adventure set in a cyberpunk cityscape where you will encounter numerous items to investigate, curious easter eggs and a whole cast of interactive NPCs. You must analyze every detail and discover the truth that lurks behind the heavy mist. You take on the role of a veteran cop turned hard-boiled detective and investigate crime in a future cyberpunk world where the magnificent sky city blocks the sun but the neon lights never go out. People on Steam are saying that this is a nice relaxing game of gathering clues filled with cute characters and pets, great visuals and nice music with the heavy Blade Runner influence. Some puzzles are kinda tricky and will demand a lot of your brain power. Be sure you have it before playing. Banners of Ruin 
another dungeon crawler RPG roguelite deck builder. This time instead of monsters and humans we are getting smart medieval themed animal warriors and you are taking the lead. People on Steam are saying that einfach eins der gelsten single player, das ich je gespielt habe, aber am Ende musste selbst wissen. I have no idea what that means, but it's a positive review, so I hope I didn't accidentally curse your mother or something. You'll have six races to explore with unique racial card pools and passives to choose from. You will level up your characters to unlock talent cards and powerful skills that can drastically impact your strategy. Well, that is, if you have one. That is assuming that you are a smart war leader, true hero and so on. And you are, never doubt yourself, you beautiful schmuck. And now subscribe, don't be a digital orphan without a loving channel. Shadow Gambit, The Cursed Crew so this is an all-new strategy game set during an alternate history of the golden age of piracy. The terrible curse of lost souls haunts the mysterious island chain known as the Lost Caribbean, which is under the control of the terrible forces of the Inquisition. They despise all that is supernatural and use soul-devouring fire to hunt cursed pirates. And you are in charge of those, so th that's not cool. Anyway, the game is made by the same bunch of people as Desperados 3 and Shadow Tactics titles, so I can assure you that the level of awesome Awesomeness is pretty high here. Anyway, you will sail on a sentient cursed ship, which will act as your base of operations. You will hire new crew members, pick missions to embark on, and do many other nitpicky piratey things. I was really impressed by the tiny details of the ship. Its design is absolutely awesome. A lot of time was invested in making it, although I didn't like the controls of the camera. I didn't like them at all. If I had to rate camera controls of this game in a range from a pile of snot to an awesome exploding supernova, these controls would be somewhere where the dandruffs are, so not so far from a pile of snot. But the combat was the coolest thing. The game is a participant of the real-time tactics genre, meaning that you will have to make your plan of future activities in your head at first and only then dive into the real thing. Iris and the Giant this is a fusion of a collectible card game with RPG and roguelike elements. Although don't get me wrong when I say collectible card game, this is strictly a single player experience. You play as Iris, who must brave her fears in her imaginary world. Behind the game's unique minimalist art style you will explore a touching story of a young woman facing her inner demons and soothing her raging giant inside. Game is short, it will eat up about 5 hours of your life. People on Steam are saying that the game has great art design and is quite easy to play, although keep in mind that it is roguelite, so it will require you to fail a few times to unlock powers and imaginary friends. Also be warned that the story is emotional and will play with your feelings. Dying Light. The game has an overwhelmingly positive review score on Steam and that makes at least 95% of all players happy with their purchase. Anyway, you will have to survive in a city ravaged by, obviously, zombie virus and freely roam around basking in its unique atmosphere. You will also use parkour skills to jump or climb buildings and reach remote areas. But the most dramatic shift in the world comes at the sundown, as you change from a hunter to a hunted. That is a terrifying experience and you would never leave the safe zone at night, but the best quests and rewards await you only when the darkness falls. Also, if you are used to taking free games from the Epic Store, you may already have it, so check your library. Forgone. I think someone sent me the code and I installed the game just to check it out, but I was hooked for a few hours. I never finished it, but I definitely played way more than I was expecting to. I'm not a platformer player at all to be honest, and it still hooked me hard. The game itself is not that long as well, you will beat it in about 6 hours if you have a skill. And if you are like me, it will take you way longer than this. Just use the gamepad, it's kinda terrible to control it with a keyboard. My controller was on the table a few meters away and I was too lazy to connect it, so believe me, I know what I say. The game itself is really detailed, colorful and really fun to play. Your character has a lot of cool skills you will enjoy using. Also, a very positive review score on Steam is making this game for this price a must-play for every platformer's fan. Inscription. This is a card-based odyssey that blends the deck-building roguelike, escape room-style puzzles and psychological horror into a well-mixed Bloody Mary. You'll acquire a deck of woodland creature cards by draft, surgery and self-mutilation, unlock the secrets lurking behind the walls of a mysterious cabin and embark on an unexpected and deeply disturbing adventure. So don't play this game with your little kids or something. Anyway, overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam are well-deserved, this game is a real gem. Also, if you are in doubt, you can play the free demo version. Destroy all humans. 
It's the 1950s and you, a decent hardworking alien, are here to destroy those disgusting filthy humans for your own personal gain and just for pure fun in general. Of course, you will have an array of unearthly weapons and psychic abilities. I think you will enjoy an A-probe gun in particular, because who doesn't like... Um, never mind. In this game you can also control a flying saucer. Nice. In general, this game is well written and fun and doesn't take itself too seriously. Also, there is an update on the graphics, so it's much prettier now. The only sad thing about this game that it takes only about 8 hours to beat. Cultist Simulator this is a tabletop game, but, you know, it's on Steam, so you won't have to do any calculations in your head, everything will be done for you, and that's great. This is a game of apocalypse and yearning from the creator of Fallen London and Sunless Sea. You will play as a seeker after unholy mysteries in a 1920s theme setting of hidden gods and secret histories. Perhaps you're looking for knowledge or power, or beauty or revenge. Perhaps you just want the colors beneath the skin of the world. Colors out of space? Maybe. It's a very Lovecraftian game, after all. So in this roguelite narrative card game what you find may transform you forever. Every choice you make from the moment to moment doesn't just advance the narrative, it also shapes it. Become a scholar of the unseen arts, search your dreams for sanity twisting rituals, craft tools and summon spirits, indoctrinate innocence, seize your place as the herald of a new age, ban the pineapples in the potato salad. Well, you get the point. Witch it. This is a multiplayer hide and seek game where you are tasked with seeking hidden witches that blend in with the environment. Well, or play as a witch and do all that blending yourself. At first glance, that book on a shelf may look innocent, but remember, witches can disguise themselves as any physical object, although if you turn yourself into a pizza, you will look kinda suspicious on the ground or in the bookshelf as well. You need to think where and how to blend in. Sadly, there is no ability to transform yourself into hairy balls. That, that is Sad. Also, if you are a hunter, your perception skills will come in handy, that's no doubt. You will also be able to craft new items or even your own maps to play in. Game may look a bit childish, and honestly it is, but it has around 90% of positive reviews, so a great time is almost guaranteed. Book of Demons it is a surprisingly good game ignored by many just because of how it looks. It has great lighting effects, but those paper figures are definitely not for everyone. Anyway, here you can decide the length of the quests. Wield magic arts instead of weapons and slay armies of darkness in the dungeon below the old cathedral. Yeah, I bet you heard that somewhere. People on Steam are talking that Book of Demons has great replayability with a variety of combinations, interesting art direction, and fast, non-boring gameplay. Although some are saying that the game can become a bit monotonous, but I'm pretty sure that it can happen because of the skills and spells you use. If your build is not fun enough, you will get not enough fun. Simple, right? So Google some nice builds before you play. Let there be a bit of Book of Demons among big boob milfs in your search history. Anyway, the game has 91% of positive reviews and it's kinda cheap. Dead Island Definitive Edition the same developers who made Dying Light created this zombie-infested game as well. And this zombie apocalypse is more beautiful than ever. You will be running from and killing undead in the beautiful tropical island, a wonderful paradise on Earth, and this contrast is really great. Exploring this island is really fun, from the zombie-infested deserted city to secluded beaches and vast highlands. Roam around in order to discover the story behind the zombie outbreak. You can also play in a story-based 4-player co-op mode. Also, have you noticed that this game actually calls zombies zombies. Not walkers, roamers, crazed ones, biters, freakers, and so on, but actual zombies, and they have my respect for not trying to invent the bicycle again. Zombies are zombies. But what if they are fast and smart? Then they are fast, smart zombies. Period. Anyway, in Dead Island Definitive Edition, you will get the main game and all the DLCs as well. Also, graphics are in HD and so on, and the price is more than great. A Plague Tale Innocence he will take control of young Amisha and her little brother Hugo in a journey through the darkest hours of history. Haunted by Inquisition soldiers and surrounded by unstoppable swarms of rats, you will struggle to survive against overwhelming odds. Dead, rotten bodies lay everywhere and rats, oh, those creatures can and will eat anyone alive who does not carry a light source. As I always say, this is a bit unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, rats are no vampires. I used to own one, it liked bathing in the sun rays. Well, what if those are vampire rats? 
that. Um, I never actually thought about that. Anyway, keep in mind that the atmosphere here is grim and dark, so if you are a sensitive person, it may prove a challenge to play. Game tend to pull the ropes of emotion. And if you let your guard down and allow it to do its dark job, it will control you like a puppet. But in general, all that darkness is cool and original, keeping in mind all those airy fairy unicorn games people are used to play these days. 8-bit hordes. Basically, this is a Warcraft 3 if it would be made using the Minecraft engine. Here you'll find two factions, the Dark Orcs and their undead friends versus those annoying humans, dwarves, elves and all that puny stuff in general. You'll collect resources, build up and defend your base, amass your army of evil or, you know, pathetic good and ultimately crush your opponents. Game offers 24 offline campaign missions, 12 co-op missions to play with your mother-in-law and 10 multiplayer maps that support up to 8 trolls online, literally and figuratively. AI is present as well. It has multiple difficulty options, also it can play in a team with you or destroy you. Game is easy to understand and is really user-friendly. If you like RTS games, there is no doubt that you may like this one as well. And now, thank you for watching and don't forget that in my channel you can find hundreds of videos like that with new ones released almost every day. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!